I have worked as as an investigative journalist for 22 years in India, and uh, I, I would like to share my experiences. I, I would like to first begin uh, with telling you that India was celebrating its 75th Independence Day on the 15th August last month, and uh, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi was talking about respecting women during his speech from the Red Fort. And on the same day, his government had released 11 accused individuals who were uh, who were charged, who were accused, who were imprisoned for life imprisonment on the charge of raping a woman named Bilkis Bano and murdering seven of her family members. Not only they were, uh, the remission was given to them, they were welcomed by BJP and VHP leaders as if freedom fighters were coming out of the jail on the Independence Day. Uh, they were garlanded, they were, uh, I mean, honored. And uh, so that's a very, I mean, a very big example of how it, uh, how it is happening now. And it's not a, not a case of in, happen, happening in isolation because the ideologue of Hindutva, the proponent, Mr. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar had written long ago in 1923 that rape is a political weapon and it should be exercised against your a woman of your uh, opponent uh, opponents because it demoralizes your opposition, it demoralizes them, it, they cannot fight back, so rape has to be used as a political weapon. So this is something the ideologue wrote way back in 1923 and the ruling party present today is actually exercising it. So we can imagine what kind of threat uh, this ideology poses. Secondly, the Goldwalker, uh, the uh, I mean one of the main ideologues of RSS, Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangha, in his book called Bunch of Thoughts, which is uh, regarded as a bible of all Hindu nationalists. In Bunch of Thoughts, Golwalkar wrote that minorities in India will have to either merge and assimilate with the majority community or they will have to live at the mercy of the majority community. They will not have any special rights, they will not have any rights at all. So this is something which he wrote in the 1930s and now the government is following it government is implementing it through several acts and several actions. For example, we have all heard about the Citizenship Amendment Act and uh, the National Register of Citizenship and how it actually created a huge uh, chain of protests across India. Right now, in fact, I have an affidavit with me which uh, an individual filed on the 29th of August, two days ago, in Mumbai High Court, saying that, the, asking the court to make him a witness in the blast cases that happened in Maharashtra, for example, in Malegao blast or uh, the blast that had happened previously. And he said that he was an RSS worker and he was trained by Indian Army personnel in Jammu and Kashmir to use weapons of mass destruction to make bombs and uh, when he actually, he actually in this affidavit says that uh, the organization had plans to, uh, I mean, conduct 500 to 600 blasts across India. And uh, when he heard about, rather when, when he got to know about the entire design, uh, he withdrew from it. And now he is asking the court to make him a witness. Uh, now, apart from this, I mean, I myself, while working as an investigative journalist, I had, I had lived in Gujarat undercover as Rafiq Qureshi to find out the truth about the cow vigilante and the lynching that is happening. So I lived there for six months and I used to transport cattle from Rajasthan to Gujarat and record that how the entire extortion business runs. I was beaten up number of times, number of times, nine, ten times, I was beaten up mercilessly. I was all bleeding and when I showed them money, they took me to their president and then the president started negotiating with me. 
and uh, they they used to charge 15000 rupees for a truckload of cows 6500 rupees for a truckload of buffaloes and 5000 rupees for the young male buffaloes and uh, he told me that uh, fear is our investment whenever they kill somebody at least 10 to 20000 people get scared and uh, that's how this uh, business runs so uh, for hindus they say that cow is our uh, mother and uh, this is protection of mother but under the disguise of cow vigilante a huge business and he told me on camera uh, of course it was a hidden camera he told me on camera that every day they collect 1.5 crore rupees every day on one single check post that amounts to 500 crore rupees in one year at one single check post so that kind of extortion network is run by these organizations I also was an investigative journalist, which I happened to break uh, the Maliga blasts that happened in 2006 and 2008. And for the first time, uh, the right-wing leaders like Sadhvi Pragya Singh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Prasad Purohit and all of them were arrested. Uh, unfortunately, the government changed in 2014 and the same terrorist accused, Sadhvi Pragya Singh, became the member of parliament from Bhopal. And, uh, and and that that that's the situation. I heard that Sadhvi Rutumbara was here in uh, in in US, and uh, I remember her giving very fiery speeches in the late eighties. And she was uh, one of the accused. In fact, she was charged by Liberian Commission uh, in the Babri Mosque demolition case. The judiciary, unfortunately. Uh, today is also uh, completely surrendered, at least in India. And in fact, my latest book, uh, which I have written about the murder of Judge Loya, who killed Judge Loya. Judge Loya was presiding over a case uh, of triple murder in which Sora Buddin Sheikh, his wife Kausar B, and his friend Tulsi Prajapati were killed. And uh, present uh, Home Minister of India, Amit Shah, was the main accused in that particular case and uh, Judge Loya was presiding over the case, but Judge Loya was killed. And uh, it was told to the press at that point in time that he died of a heart attack. But uh, I, I, I was investigating that, and uh, over a period of one and a half years, which went on for the investigation, I could dig out every single piece of document, which, I mean, beyond doubt proves that this was nothing but a murder. Uh, of course, that was my last story as an investigative journalist in November 2017 because Amit Shah had become the Home Minister and uh, I lost my job. Uh, and they ensured that the, he remains unemployed for the last so, so many four and a half years. Uh, but I have written that book and uh, in fact it starts with how judiciary has compromised and what is the situation of judiciary right now. We all have heard about uh, the verdict given in Babri Mosque demolition. On the first page of the order, court says that demolition of the mosque was an illegal and criminal act. On the last page of the order, they say that the premises should be hand handed over to the same people because the land is in their possession for the last 12 years. And uh, one of the channels in India had come to me take, uh, for asking my reaction. And I said that Lord Rama was fortunate that he did not approach Supreme Court because the Supreme Court would have said that kidnapping is an illegal and criminal act. But Sita remains in Ravan's possession for the last 12 years. So she will remain with him. So that is the kind of situation that has happened in India. Uh, this Hindutva uh, ideology, I know for sure that has spread across the world through several organizations like Vishwa Hindu Parishad, uh, Hindu American Foundation, Hindu Swayam Sevak Sangatna, and uh, they are trying to influence policies of foreign countries right now, apart from spreading hatred, because uh, it's only hatred which is uh, on which they can survive. But I believe very firmly in one of the sayings of Mahatma Gandhi where he said that hatred has an expiry date Love, brotherhood, fraternity are timeless. Thank you.